So I had a great time hanging out with my uncle and aunt. Um, super generous. Check this out. They just hooked me up with uh, one of his old jackets. It's actually really cool. It's, it's kind of backwards to how you think they designed. It's got the weather shield on the inside for rain. That's uh, You can unzip it. And then the outer shell has got the armor and the mesh. But uh, apparently if you're not wearing the inner shell, the wind goes right through this outer shell and it's very comfortable even on the hottest days. So at gat, bro. At gat. I'll be able to uh, actually have a nice jacket. I gotta get some decent pants. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get some proper motorbike gear. That was one of the complaints. One of the many complaints. I, I see the comments on the videos now that are going up on the motorbike and I understand that yeah, like it would be nice to have panniers and heated grips and, and bark busters and all these features that you say you want to put on the bike and yeah eventually I will get all of that stuff um, but I bought that motorcycle two days before I left and it wasn't like ready to be safety when I bought it I had to do some repairs to it also I'm broke <laughs> so um, like I didn't really have money to do any of this stuff I spent less than $300 on gas on that entire trip I spent barely anything on food I spent uh, I think $90 on lodging on the whole trip so it was a very, very budget trip, you know, that was extremely budget, and I made it work. And for me, that was, that was the most important bit, is being able to see all of that despite the fact being broke as hell. And, I mean, that goes under the van, you see the van, like, this summer's been rough because spending all that money on repairs and stuff, like, that's not good, that's not what, I, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to see as many things as I can despite being broke. So, we're gonna gonna head out. I got some uh, friends to see. I, they're heading out on their van trip very soon. Um, Catherine and Callum, I, it's exciting. I, I want to see their van. Apparently it's in the shop, but I still gotta get to see it. I'm gonna see some family today. It's gonna be a good day. It's only just started. for a short walk before I uh, go meet these folks. We're gonna meet at a coffee shop. How blasé, I know. But uh, people often ask me if a champ's happy or on the road. I mean, people like this idea that a dog is necessarily happy out on an adventure, and I suppose that's true. What I've noticed, especially in animals, is that um, if somebody or some living thing is having a rough time, if they're uh, depressed, it's not actually like a monotonous depression that you see in them. You actually see larger like behavioral swings. So they'll actually, there'll be times where they're happier, they seem happier than ever, but it'll just be a matter of contrast, right? What I've seen in Champ now is he, he's not very anxious very often, and on the road he tends to have just a, like a consistently higher energy than he does in, uh, in a house. He also tends to lose weight when he's on the road because my sister feeds him quite a lot, she spoils him. And out with me, he gets a lot more running in, and, and I don't feed him quite as much. Dog food especially, um, I try to feed him more table scraps. Just a theory I have that, uh, you know, if it's healthier for humans, it's probably healthier for dogs too. To not eat the same thing every single day. Anyway, quick little walk with Champ, and uh, I'm going to go meet these folks. Yeah, I have to film every part of my life, okay? Don't judge me. It's all good. How are you? Oh, yeah, mate. So this is Callum, right here. 
Uh, Kat's not with us today, but uh, we're gonna go check out his van. Callum, you're how many days away from moving into your van full time? Is it Thursday? Yeah, it's Thursday. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We leave on Monday. Leave on Monday. And they're actually going kind of the same direction I am, so we might meet up again on the road. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I'll be in Chicago in like four or five days. Yeah, we don't actually go to Chicago. Um, but you're going up to Indianapolis, and then after that, where Indy, are you headed? Uh, St. Louis and Colorado. Okay, so I'm going to Denver, Colorado. Same. All right, we might so, meet up there. so we'll see each other in Denver, maybe. All right. Wicked. He's just getting into it. Um, I'm listening to like a lot of the things he's like stressing about, and it's putting me back to where I was like a year ago. And I just want to like hug you and tell you everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> I need to be held. You know, <laughs> but but it will be okay and it won't. Like you're gonna have some really tough days, uh, but. Uh, what I've learned the most is, and this is uh, this is probably the most important thing, don't worry about the gear, don't worry about the stuff, don't worry about it, it's gonna, it's gonna break. It's all gonna break, you're not gonna have the right stuff, it's gonna rain, you're, it's, things are gonna leak. If you worry about that though, the entire time, you're not gonna enjoy when it's actually functioning. So just put this big stupid smile on your face, get out there and enjoy it while it's still running. Okay? Awesome, I will, I'll try. Do that, <laughs> don't stress too much. Also, when you're about to leave for a trip, you always stress. I got. I had a million things to do, and like a few days ago, and now I'm just like, no, oh, whatever. I'm on my travels. I'm so relaxed. It's over. Yeah, I'm in Toronto. That's a whole different city now. Yeah. So this is Roland. <laughs> Roland. We named him Roland. And hopefully, he keeps rolling. Roland. Roland. That's our Instagram. Oh, nice. Account. I'll link that in the description. You Check go. it out. There you go. Welcome to the van. It's really dirty right now. Come on in. So this is a really actually very different layout. Here's yeah. your kitchen. You're using one of these Peltier device ones, TCs with so, the 12 volt. Yeah, it's a 12 volt down there for it. Um, just a little cooler. Just a little cooler. That's all you really need. Um, but we actually also have a fridge down here. This is normally a closed cabinet, but it's now a whole bunch of shelving that's been put in. Nice. Now this is like the smallest stove I've seen yet, yeah, but it, that's all you need though. Like I never use my third burner ever. Yeah, we think this is actually perfect. Um, yeah. Had to get that all fixed up because one used to shoot flames super high. <laughs> um, microwave that we barely use and you can't use unless you're on the 110 volt. Yeah, you're going to probably end up removing that I think. Maybe, who knows. I have to run the generator every like at least month to keep it healthy, so right. that's actually a good a good test for it. Get your, uh, you know, your microwave dinners out once a microwave month. Celebrate. Dinners, buddy. Uh, back here, besides just before we start getting into this stuff, is an air conditioner with your fantastic fan. You're living in a lap of luxury. Yeah, and then you just have like storage stuff in here. Um, just three big shelves on each side. Fold up with some more shit um, up there. Um, and then as you move back, it's two benches, and it they slide together to make a really crazy uh, queen size bed. So we do have a table that's actually underneath the, the one bench here right now. Yeah. And it goes in for the dinette. And more storage and stuff down there. Yeah, some more storage. There's a furnace on the one side. And then your kind of electrical system sits on this side. Cool. Um, do you have a water heater in this thing too? No water heater. Weird. Um, it doesn't have, so this model, when the, you know, the original owner bought it, uh, foregoed the shower. Okay. Rotrex will install a shower curtain thing and they will have an area where you can pull up the floor oh. and run and have a drain into the holding tank Okay. so that you can actually open this up um, and then block everything off and then shower in this space and then drain That's it. That's actually really smart. Um, but this this particular model didn't have it so there's no point putting in a water heater. Yeah, I suppose not. Um, so we just have cold water, um, which is fine. We don't mind heating. Boil up some water if you got to wash dishes or whatever, you're good. Yeah. Um, and that's totally cool with us. My um, hot water heater hasn't run for a year, so yep. I'm in the same right. boat anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much the whole back of house. Is this a, so is this a toilet in here? That's a toilet in there. Okay. So this is uh, your real fancy toilet system. Yeah, toilet. Magic happens there. That's... Um, and that's yep. good for, I don't know how many liters, to be honest with you. I don't Who remember. Knows? Um, and that's all controlled like I can I can find out all that information just by looking up here and seeing what's in there um, They're kind of you know rough gauges. So once it gets over starts getting over half. I'm, I'm gonna be searching for a, a dump site and uh, The battery monitor that's kind of a useless feature doesn't really actually tell you much 
in the long run. Technology, eh? Yeah. So mm -hmm. front of front of the van is very similar, probably to Simon's, um, in the sense Dope. that it's the same Dodge model. Um, I think your seats are less ugly than mine. Less ugly? I don't know. It's it's toss up. Toss up. All right. Well, all of them PPT is down here. Yeah, all the way down there. Yeah. Here's your solar charge controller. And how many watts do you have on the roof? 200 watts. 200, 200 glorious 100, watts. 200, 100. Two 100 watt panels. Nice. Um, That's all you need. Yeah, we have two batteries. Uh, they're actually, what's very funny is this is how you access your two house batteries in a 1994 Road Trek. Is you actually come down here and oh, pull this real fun carpet up. And normally you would pull this out, but I'm not going to bother. And you lift this up, and you've got two house batteries down there. Um, so they're accessible so here. So convenient. So totally convenient, right? So there's two uh, two batteries down there with a total 162 amp hour uh, availability, but um, don't go past 50, so we're back down to 81 amp hours. So if it gets cold and we're down to 50%, we're screwed. Here is kind of... This is the only thing I found really weird. The, the year after this, it, they changed it so this whole part lifts up okay. as a system. But this is where you actually identify your propane tank. Hmm. Uh, there you go. This is a really awkward place for them actually to put this. But Mine's a lot worse. Uh, and this is just the generator uh, insert slot. So you oh, can, you how can many watt? Like how many watts is your generator? Great question, my friend. I don't know. It's 113 pounds though. Um, I could look it up. Huh. It does, like it powers. Oh, nice, so it's pa and it's auto start too. You just press a button and it goes. Yeah, it's on. So on the inside of the wall here, there's a uh, starter button to start stop it. It's yeah. only got, I think this is the original generator and it's got 170 hours on it, which is nothing for a generator. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Solar panels as I'm going down. Uh, it was really nice to meet up with uh, Callum again and, and talk vans and see his uh, his point of view, his, his experience and where he's starting out on the van stuff and how he's doing it differently than I did and uh, it's cool to like reconnect with people. I, I think it's also really cool once you've been traveling for a while and it becomes part of your lifestyle you start meeting up with people that you met up with before in your travels and that's like that's a really kind of neat friendship because you, you've connected with them in the past but now you've you've done all this stuff and, and they followed your travels. You've tra followed the things they've done, and uh, and to reconnect, it's like almost like a check-in, and it's really cool how things will just pick up where they were. Anyway, I'm taking Champ for a walk here. I'm gonna tire him out because in about an hour I'm going motorbiking with another friend of mine. So I'm very excited for that. So good. Yep. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My bike looks like a POS. Is that so this is what is that off a of Honda? This is aftermarket, polysport. It's just okay. like an aftermarket brand. Oh it's totally aftermarket, okay. Yep. Same with the fenders. Dual oh, port exhaust, that's weird. Where? That oh sense. yeah, it goes two to one. Yeah. It comes up. Yeah, everything is OEM except for the plastics basically. Did you even put bars. a cat in there and everything? Where? So this is a it's a Honda a CR. It's, a, it's an XR250. XR250, okay. Yeah, Stranger's bike on the back of my van. This actually feel, looks a lot bigger than mine. Wow, uh, yeah. Maybe the height. It's way more legit. You got so much travel on the front. Oh, yeah. That mine does, definitely does not have. Champ, we talked about this. Back inside. Go. Okay, we're finally 
You like my new visor, by the way? It's cool, right? Uh, we're finally ready to go. My spark plug wouldn't fire over, so I had to go grab another one. 10,000 kilometers will do that to a bike, I guess. We're gonna go check out some of the trails that are nearby. Excited! Anthony for a bit, but I uh, got him again. I'm We're good. Uh, got some hot coffee in us. Can you tell me, like, what is the deal with this bike? So this was okay. Your so girlfriend's dad's bike. This was yes, my girlfriend's dad's bike. Original owner from 1981. Wow. And the thing was seized up. The motor was it was rusted. It was a piece of shit. And now it is turned into the beautifulness that you see before you. All redone. Powder coated. Rebuilt the motor, rebuilt this, new plastics, new paint, everything. It's just, she's she's back to her original 1981 glory. I was warning him that, you know, if he if he gets it looking too nice, he's going to be so afraid of dropping it, he's not going to have any fun on it. I, I am. I'm terrified. He's so scared of dropping it. <laughs> I'm like, the Sherpa is meant to be dropped. That's what it's there for. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. 